Well, what have we got here? We've got a Fidelity 3000 base station. And I had a request, someone says, would you cover the Fidelity 3000 base station? I knew we'd got a ropey looking one, which somebody had resprayed black. And I fancy using, it's one we bought. And uh, I fancy actually using it in the workshop as a monitor receiver. However, this, I thought I'll just unbox some stuff for the week which has come in. And blow me, there's a Fidelity 3000 base station. Now, what about that? The factory original service manual, we see. So there we are, we can do it properly. Now, I seem to recall that you have to use a sweep generator for these. I don't have a sweep generator on this test bench. I have it in another building. So if that happens, I may have to kind of not do that on the video, but I'll explain it. Now, I'm going to pause the video while we open this up and see if there's anything inside. Right, that's taken eight screws out and the knobs off and opened it up. Now these were made in Taiwan by the company Great and so were some of the other, or one of the other Fidelity models, the 1000 used the Great 848 chassis and then there were some other radios, quite a lot of other music radios that used the Great 858 and 868 chassis. It was quite well known for being a bleed over box but in these days of much lesser users. I mean, it was a problem when there were 10 people in one street uh, all trying to chat on different channels with um, adjacent channel rejection snags on radios. But these days, it isn't really a problem. The point is that these have remained to be quite reliable. I'm not talking general, the great sets, and yet 30 years on, they're still working. Now, this has come in for service and has nothing on the ticket whatsoever. But I will impress you all because, look, it's got the original Fidelity mic. So, one of the wonderful things about these sets is they've got three sockets on the back. We're plugged into the extension speaker socket with the test equipment as usual, and of course the aerial socket. With the other two, you've got uh, a tape recorder socket, and you've got a public address speaker socket. So it's a base station with public address. So um, that, that's quite a handy feature. Built-in SWR meter. Obviously you've got the transformer there for the power supply. You've got voltage regulator things there. And... It's basically just like any of the other great sets, and it must be four years since I've seen a great set at all. So, as I say, I've got the manual, and we'll go through the setup, and this part of the video, we'll deal with the VCO. Right, we'll switch it on and see what happens. Okay, well, it's come on on 19, and it's, the meter's lit up. So we'll move that to channel 20. Ooh, it's difficult without the knob. It is receiving. Let's turn the volume down. If that's the volume. You've got uh, volume, squelch, tone, SWR calibrate and RF gain. That's a bit noisy, we'll be cleaning that. And I can't turn it down any more than that. That's quite frustrating. So I'll switch the uh, audio off the signal generator. Right. I'll run now through what the service manual says. And we'll go through alignment of the VCO. Just pause the video while I read that out. Well, I'll take quite a few of my words back. When I've opened the um, can for the phase lock loop section... I've discovered it isn't one of those three crystal synthesizers, it's a single crystal Sanyo LC7137. Let's zoom into that. Well, I always thought that these were the same phase like loop arrangements as the other great chassis sets, and it just shows how wrong you can be. I have only ever seen one of these before, and clearly I didn't work on the VCO, so uh, there we go. So, sorry, Fidelity, I'll take those words back. So that's an improvement. Okay, the procedure is this on these sets. Selected channel 20, and in receive, we're supposed to look for logic high on pin 14 of the synthesizer chip. So we've got the pin one 
is shown by the ident dot. It's a 20 pin chip, so it's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And I have on my meter here, whoops, if I press the, put it on the right one, logic high, which is 6.9 volts. I'll just zoom out so you can see the meter. right under the light so I don't know let's just uh, look at the uh, video monitor just make sure I can we can both see that should be able to see that so we're on receive I'm on pin 14 and that's 6.9 volts which is logic high going into transmit now I've got 7 point something 7.06 and again, that is logic high. Now I've checked off camera that this is on channel 1 and channel 40, also in lock. It's as simple as that. If it wasn't in lock, what do we do? Well, TC1 has to be adjusted uh, on transmit. And TC1... I presume is that one. I'll just zoom in again. I'll just look at the layout. In the manual. Yes, TC1 is that is that lower one. And TC2 will be the frequency adjust one which we'll now do. We'll see what the manual says. Right, um, to set up the... Um, we'll, move, we'll go on to the transmitter because that took less time than I thought. Um, just reading the manual here, it says set to channel 20, connect a frequency counter uh, to capacitor 110 and then adjust L6, L9 and 10 to give maximum uh, on a um, FET voltmeter. Now, this radio is already working, so I don't have to start scampering about looking for um, capacity to 110. I'll just pause the video though and find it just so I'll show you where it is. Okay, because this radio is actually working, it's not something I'm going to do, is to get down to the capacitor to show you, which is down the front panel there. Now, what you've got to do according to the manual here, is you've got to take out all the screws uh, to get the printed circuit board out because the front panel, with it being sloping, it covers the front of the printed circuit board. And so you've got, there's a screw there, and there's a screw there, and then there's one about there, there's one for the bracket there, there's one there, and then you've got three in the front panel. That's how the board comes out. So that's how you're going to get to that if you need to do so. This manual is readily available and I've uploaded it onto a scribed site so it's there for free. Um, so capacitor 110 down is down there. That's if you've got no output. I've got output of course because the radio has come in wanting just a service. It is actually working to all intents and purposes. So your transmitter adjustments, it says here IL8 uh, sorry, L6, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 13. So L6, expect the ones down the side of the front panel as well. Um, L6. Yeah. L6, 8, and 10 are down there. So they... You, you would have to have the board out to get to those. So, from 6, 8 and 10, let's have a look what's next. Eleven and 13. Right, L11, we can just get to. If we can get the correct tool in there, that is. Just 
make sure that one's peaked. There we go. I'll just set the radio into transmit. There we are. There's a little improvement on that. The, the, I've never known these great chassis do much power. I'll probably end up taking my words back on that as well. Uh, and this particular one, I'll have to put it on the lower scale, is currently only doing two and a half watts. Of course, it should be four. So that's the first one I've been. I can get to. Obviously, those first three don't need to just me because they're well down the um, the chain. Um, so we'll move forwards. It's a matter of reading this manual to you as we go. And the next one, that was L11, but it's not labelled. I'm sure it was L11. L13 is in the can, followed by L15. So L13, see if we can get down there with the yellow tool. So it's the one down there, and L15 is the one down there. So they're quite finicky to get to, aren't they? I'll just pause the video while I see what tool I need to use to get down there. Yes, yeah, so what I've been able to do is to get the black uh, tool I use down that one successfully, and we've peaked that, and now we're going to move on to L15. I've just taken the screw out of the little bracket to the front panel, and I can now adjust that one. And that's now, we're looking at about 2.9 watts. So it's come up a little tiny bit. I'll pause the video while I put that screw in. So to recap, it's coils, the three hidden ones under there, which are um, six, uh, sorry, eight, nine, and ten. It doesn't say where six is in the manual, unfortunately, but it does. what it doesn't do is label that one. So I've got a sneaking suspicion it could be that one into the VCO can, uh, with that not being labelled. So possibly is that one. I'm not going to upset this radio by adjusting it. Those three which you can't get to easily, but I say in this case it's just a matter of a tune-up. I've been able to adjust L13, and by taking that screw out I've been able to adjust L15. So we're now going to transmit once again, and we'll see what we've got. Yeah, well, we've got three watts. And I have to admit that that's often what you get out of this type of radio. Now, we'll check the high-low power setting on this. It actually says that you, its maximum power output is 3.7 watts. So, there you are. Now, this test set we've got is a proper commercial test set, and it... I find with CB equipment, what this says is 4 watts is often equivalent to 7 good buddy watts. So uh, it, it, people with the um, cheaper power meters might think this is doing about 5 watts, but in reality it's actually doing 3. So uh, th there is always a discrepancy because these are properly calibrated instruments. Right, um, so I'll just move forward, as I say, we'd better do the... Um, the SR, it, the, he says, do the SR, um, the RF meter. It's uh, SVR3. So we we'll find the SVR3 for you. And hopefully, that's SVR2. One. Four. Anything but you notice. Turns out that SVR3 is also down behind the meter on the main printed circuit board. So again, you'd have to have the board out to do that. Now on this radio, if we key up, and I'll just zoom in so you can see this on the meter. If I key up, it's swinging straight across oops, to three and a half, which is 
basically what we've got. So, yeah, that's uh, it's all right on this, but I can imagine if you've got some major faults, it's quite a faff to get the main board out. Now we'll just, just go for the deviation. So we'll see what it says about that. SVR2 is the deviation. And we found that before, didn't we? And it's that one there. So just move that slightly on the bench. There we go. So I'll get my oscillator out. Set the test set into that mode. I've got one and a half deviation. So it's things like this is why they come in for service because we've ever so quiet that. So we've just brought that straight up to two and a half. And we'll just do the whistle check. <whistles> Wallow. little bit more. This mic leads faulty so that'll be another thing which I'm going to have to sort out. <whistles> Wallow. <whistles> yeah, that's it. That's spot on now. Yes, the mic lead has um, failed somewhere near the uh, where it goes in, so I'll get a new lead on that. They're quite a fab to fit, as you will be aware. I've got those in stock. With it having the original mic, it seems a sensible thing to do. And that concludes setting up the transmitter. Oh, we haven't done the frequency, have we? Now, the frequency on this is um, CT2, I seem to recall, which is that one. I know it's that one. It's what they call it. Um, it's T TC2 is the one for the frequency because TC1 was the one for the VCO. So we'll just see what that's now doing. Go back into transmit. 27.79.125 is what it should be. And it's just slightly low at 27.79.111. So we'll just bring that back up. As I've said many times before, crystals drop uh, with age. So this is absolutely normal procedure. Right, high low power. It should be the final thing. Now, which switch is that? Oh, it's on the back on these. So that's the 10 decibel attenuator. Let's see what that's reading. It should be 0 0.4 of a watt. It's actually 0 0.1 of a watt, so that needs adjusting. And I'll pause the video once again just to see where that is. Unfortunately, the high-low power on these radios is preset so there's nothing we can do to adjust it and um, as I said it looked to me like it was doing about um, exactly actually it's doing 100 and 180 milliwatts it should be 400 milliwatts but there's nothing you can do about it it's just the way the set is you have to accept these are probably the cheapest base station that was on the market and we all know that the quality of the great products on the mobile CBs was, to be honest, pretty abysmal, but they've proved to be reliable. So there you have it, some very difficult to get to controls, needs taking the board out if you need to get to those, but thank goodness it's got the LC7137, so it's actually easy to set up the, the synthesizer, um, and I was fearing that we'd got to have a big faff around with a three crystal mixer arrangement. So next video we'll cover the receiver, which luckily we can get to all that. So there we go.